started. Okay. Welcome, guys. So if this is your first call, you're in for a good one. Some of you, this has been um, your staple on a Sunday night. And this coaching call really is just to bridge the gap between we got fitness on one side of the room, we got health and like the wellness side with the food and nutrition, but we don't have a lot of people doing the mental health side of it. Um, and I want to start off, I kind of actually got triggered. I can't remember if it was yesterday or this morning. Might have been this morning. I read something that um, someone had posted, and it's a person that I know and whatnot, but they had posted that you can't really help people with mental health unless you've flown the plane before along those lines. Uh, experience trumps all. Now, I get that. I get where the person is coming from, but I highly, highly disagree with that statement being that I think we all kind of go and fight our own battles. And to compare what I've gone through to what that person who's stating this has gone through to be able to state that I'm not able, like I'm going to come out, I haven't had any suicidal thoughts. I haven't had any really extreme stuff that people would see in the media that's posed as extreme, but I've definitely had my own battles. I've definitely had my own issues um, growing this business and, and growing this community. And I've definitely had my own personal issues in the past and, and stuff like that, that I feel that have, you know, led to some of my experiences and where I am today. So I, I just saw that and I was totally triggered with the fact that someone who's a mental health advocate is shutting down every other person if they haven't actually experienced what that person thinks is a mental health issue. And in my mind, I'm just like, why don't you just push everybody up to the top instead of pushing these guys to the side and these guys to the side and then trying to dig yourself through to show that you're a little bit brighter than the rest. We could just push everybody to the top. So that's kind of what I want you guys to think about when I start presenting these things is just that we want to push each other to the top. We don't want anybody left behind, whether it's the smallest issue of someone calling you a silly name that you just can't get over and it's beat you up since your whole life. Like I got called brown cow when I was growing up in elementary school, just because I look like I had chocolate milk skin. I think it's ridiculous. Like, it's just crazy. I have, I think I have like seven different tones of skin color based on what sees the sun and what doesn't. So like, I, I don't get it. But everybody faces all these different things. And, and it's, it's a great little segue into kind of what we're talking about tonight is what do you give your power to? And I sat there and I'm like, do I give in to this comment and make a comment? Or do I use it to help motivate somebody else or or help me even push myself forward and I chose to push myself forward and bring this to you on this call and it's really given me the perspective of like who cares if someone else hasn't flown the same plane as you on the same path and and they can't talk about the same things that you talk about that's why we're all unique and that's why we're all in this together but yet we've all had the chance to say well, I'm going to let that one bug me and I'm going to let that one go. And that's what really ultimately comes down to is what really eats you up inside versus what pushes you forward. What do you use as a stepping stone versus something that's like a roadblock or a wall in front of you? And, and that all comes down to the choice that you have on giving up your energy or taking that energy and keeping it inside of you to motivate you to go do more um, in regards to what you're really truly here for. And when we compare it to like people, I guess, in the gym and stuff like that, I always, always see it where, oh, the number hasn't moved, the number hasn't moved, the number hasn't moved. And I look at them and say, you're really giving your happiness up to a machine or an, a gadget on the floor that lives on the floor for the its entire existence that you could just pull batteries out and it'll tell you nothing. You're giving your energy to the scale, dictating if you're going to be happy or not. If you see 159 today and 158 the next day and then 157, then you're going to continue to smile. But that's so crazy because then you're going to eat a lot of food and not go to the bathroom. You're going to see 159 again and you're going to be really, really sad. And that's giving up your energy to something so stupid 
that I don't even know how to explain it to people because they know how hard it is to not get on that scale and just figure out, oh my goodness, no progress because my number's not moving. There's a client at the gym that I said, you look fabulous. We could put picture before and after beside each other. The scale will say the same and that person says, no, there's no progress. And I'm like, look at you. Like, you can't figure this out. You can't connect the dots. Like it's, it's so impossible for someone that's giving up their energy to be able to connect those. And I get it. I totally get it. But you have to be conscious of what you're giving into and what you're wanting to take in. And I think it's easier said than done for sure. I, I've sat here and I've done certain things and I've not done certain things. And I'm just like, well, both um, kind of go, you know, well, I'm giving in over here and I'm going to watch Netflix for a really long time and I'm going to binge on Netflix. But I think my body is telling me, well, I need to rest and I need to check out of all this crazy thing. Am I, am I, Oh, I was paused. We're good now. Okay. Um, I just turned my mind around about it and I said, well, no, my body needs the rest. So yes, I might be binging on a show, but at the same time, maybe my body needed the rest and I just don't want to be super serious. So it's all about how you think about the things that you put yourself through and what you give into. So certain temptations, certain willpowers that um, like willpower situations where you don't have a lot in the battery left because the end of the day you just did, I don't know, work out in the morning and then you went to work, your boss was on your nerves and then you went to the cafeteria or the lunchroom and there's a whole spread of shit that you probably shouldn't eat. And then you get home and there's like this delicious container of chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. And then all of a sudden you're like six deep and you've just given your power into those cookies and then you're sitting there feeling guilty with an upset stomach. But these are all the things that we need to be conscious of. Now do we sit there and be like, man, I really, I really shouldn't have eaten those. The cookies are gone. They're gone, right? The cookies are gone. The pizza two days in a row, maybe three are gone. They're gone. And it's time to just, get rolling again, right? You're always one bite away from being back on track. You're always one squat away from the next squat challenge. We're doing a lot of squats. There's a lot today. So you're like, you're always one step away. If you just really tune in to the energy that you're giving off and the things that are pulling energy from you, like I, pur I purposely, or sorry, um, personally would rather be giving energy away, right? Giving it away to things that I want to be involved in instead of having things take it from me. And I don't know if that makes sense to you because things that take it from you, it's almost like you don't, you don't have a choice, but you do deep down, you do have a choice to participate with those things that take, 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 whether it be people in your life, a, a task that you hate, um, a garden that just has so many weeds, it just takes so much energy from you. Like there's all these different things in your life that are takers, but if you're not conscious of it, you don't know. It just freely comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. And then you're at the end of the day wondering why you're so tired, wondering why you're so beat up, wondering why you can't really get up in the morning to get motivated to do the workout. Well, it's because you don't have energy. You're not getting the proper sleep. So you're, you're, you're giving energy up towards a poor sleep cycle. You may have a TV in your room, a laptop, a tablet, a cell phone. Every single one of those items is taking energy from you, even though it needs energy to perform. So you, you've got to think like that and, and, and be conscious of what is the purpose of your, of your room? Is it to sleep? What is the purpose of your office? Is it to work? What is the purpose of your couch in the living room? Is it to work, sleep, text message, watch TV, eat dinner? Like all of those things, the more tasks you put in one single spot of what you can do in that one single spot is going to take so much energy from you because you're going to be sitting there with all of them around you and you're going to participate in each and every single one of those things. How many times, and think in your head, have you sat on the couch with your laptop, your cell phone, your TV on, a snack beside you, and potentially a person in the room? You can, you can head nod if you want. I can see a few of you. I've done it. I know Allison's done it. Carrie? Anna? Right? Imagine if you had that many things around you all vying for your attention or put yourself in the room of 
like that that silly bachelorette show or bachelor show and you have all these people just pulling 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 from you i want to meet you i want to meet you i want to talk to you i want to talk to you that's what's happening and you think you have enough energy to go around to all of them you really need to set yourself up for success label what that couch is for and make sure it's only for that you can mute this we can, there we go um, label that couch for just studying or that chair for just reading or that spot on the kitchen table isn't for all things great. Like my kitchen table is covered because we don't have chairs on the, on the actual table because the kids climb on top and then they stand up and then they laugh at us. So we don't even use the kitchen table for eating anymore. We eat while walking and it's crazy. It's so crazy because it takes up so much energy and then we feed these little birds below us because they just go bite, bite, bite. And it's hilarious, but it, it doesn't create any system or anything of, I guess, serenity or calmness. It's just energy going out. And I'm super conscious of that and I can see it going and some I can't help and some I can, but it's one of those things that's like, there's only so much in the day that you can handle. And you have to understand that you can't beat yourself up over things you put yourself into. You just have to become more of a problem solver. In that mentality, if you involve yourself into something that's taking your energy, you need to have time to solve the problem to get yourself back on track. So back to that scale, if you want to weigh yourself every morning, you should treat that scale as just a statistic to show you how your body fluctuates based on how you feel. So if one day you're not feeling so good, I can guarantee you, you're probably up a bit in weight. You might be bloated. You might not have gone to the bathroom. You might not have um eaten so well the night before you might you know you might not have drank a ton of water so now you're holding on to it there's lots and lots of reasons why but that's how you should understand that scale power if it's people around you Kiri, if it's people around you then just be conscious of the questions they're asking of you or the things they're trying to get you to do and just be conscious if of the things that they are trying to get you to do, if it serves a purpose for you and for them, or is it just one-sided? And it's not that it's bad if it's one-sided because we all need to give, take, give, take. That's what, that's what we do every single day. But just understand that if it's always pulling from you, does it pull you into situations that you don't want to be in? And if that's the case, then you have to take a stand within your abilities to do so. I understand there's some stuff, and I always say this, we always have to do shit we don't wanna do, but to an extent, right? There is something that you can say and be like, hey, that's just not for me, um, and things like that. So you just have to be more conscious of that we need to have some energy stored for the things that we wanna do for ourselves so that we can learn and develop our personal self. So time to read the books we wanna read. Time to study topics so that we can further our careers, perhaps. Time to reach out to people we haven't talked to in a long time. Time to meal prep. That's a big one. I looked at Allison's post of her meal prep spread, and I honestly cringed at the fact that I don't know how that, that would take me so long to do. It would truly take me so long to, but I know that it doesn't take her that long to do it because she's done it so much and she's given her energy into being focused and it goes by so much faster because she's not multitasking to be able to get that done. It's just like this, 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 in the oven, in the oven, in the oven. Okay, that's in the pot, that's poured into the container, it's done, done, done. So I see all the comments on that post and I'm going over it and it's like, hey, can you come do that for me? Can you come do that for me? We all face these things, but if Allison can do it, so can you, right? If Lisa can put a spaghetti squash into an instant pot, and it literally takes 18 minutes. It's a, it's a mathematical equation based on the weight of your spaghetti squash of how long it takes the Instapot to do it. You don't even have to cut it. You literally put it in, you turn the lid, and you walk away. And out comes a spaghetti squash that's already snapped in two. It breaks open when you pull it out. Like it literally just opens up. And you scoop it into containers. You can portion size, but beware, it's super effing hot right away. Like right out of the Instapot, that skin is so hot. The inside is not. I don't get it. It's like when you pop a pea. The pea on the outside is hot, but the inside is not. It's real weird. So the spaghetti squash is just like that. 
But all that energy that you're freaking out about cutting the squash, baking the squash, doing all this stuff, it literally does it for you and that's one container done and then all of a sudden you have four or five containers of spaghetti squash and in the frying pan, you whip up some ground chicken or some ground turkey and all of a sudden it's in the pan and then it's just sauce in a jar with the blue menu on it. Now you've got protein, carbs, and if you want, you can put in some fats, avocado. I don't know what you put in there for fats. Maybe they drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top with some Parmesan cheese. That'd be good. But it's really simple when you break it down. But we spend all this time wondering, how am I going to do this that I've wasted how many, how many minutes? I've wasted how much time just to get it done? Jacqueline looks like you're in the kitchen right now. Wait, I'm going to unmute you. Are you doing your meal prep? I am. And is it taking you a long time? Um, well, I'm running out of time, but no, it doesn't take me a long time once I get at it. You're running out of time. Why? What time are you going to bed? Well, I'd like to be going in about uh, half an hour. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is a perfect example of what you're giving your energy to. You're giving your energy to this call and you're not meal prepping, which is phenomenal because it's a great reason, but it's a perfect example of these are the things that get us. And, it, and I truly think if it's not, if you're really dedicated to some task and that other thing that's coming at you isn't helping you grow or isn't going to add to it, try to cut it. Just try to like say, I'm going to be with you in 15 minutes. You can put a timer and an alarm that says in 15 minutes, you can go deal with that issue. Because more than likely in that 15 minute time span, the issue solves itself. And it just either goes away, someone else figures it out. It's one of those things that's hilarious. Like if we want to eat that Oreo cookie, and I've said this in the past, put a time limit. If you still want to eat it in 10 minutes or 15 minutes from now, because usually you don't remember it, you want to eat it, and you've done something else, and it goes off and you're like, okay, I deserve the Oreo cookie. That's it. It's perfect. All these decisions are made for you so that it doesn't draw anything out of you, anything extra, right? So we have to have these little hacks. And the one thing I want to share from the book I'm reading, Atomic Habits, it's really cool is if we're caught doing something that we don't want to do, like if we're just always repetitively doing the same things that we don't want to be doing, it's very simple to just attach a new habit to an everyday thing that you have to do. And for example, I get up, turn my alarm off, out of bed, I walk around, I usually go downstairs. Along this path, I want you guys to consciously enter some other thing that's going to serve you. It's going to be proactive in your day to get it started and attach it to your everyday things. Okay, so some people go right downstairs, they turn the coffee maker on, they push button, Keurig goes down, no one drinks. I bet you, Allison, do you drink a glass of water before you push that Keurig button? Hell no, you don't. It's like, oh, I'm gonna drink my coffee, I'm thirsty. Guys, that won't make you hydrated. Maybe the night before, stick a glass of full glass of water beside the coffee maker. Get down there, push the button, drink the water, have the coffee, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful, look at Carrie's rolling her eyes too. You're one of those, eh? Coffee is not the beverage to hydrate in the morning. I promise you, you'll feel way friggin' better. Water is needed for cognitive abilities. If you're one that wakes up and you get right out of bed and you don't make it, make your bed. I don't care if someone's still in it. Tuck them in too. Into the bathroom. If you go right to the shower, have something in the bathroom that you can choose to do. Maybe it's your vitamins for the day. Maybe it's something simple like that that's just sitting beside your sink before you go into the shower. Take your vitamins and then by the time you're out of the shower, you're going to be feeling good already from your, your multivitamin and you're out the door after you push the button for the coffee, after you drink your water, after you eat your breakfast. All those good things. It's just simple things like that that you're going to put in a new habit that's going to help you make you feel better within your daily organized morning that you would never think of. Here it is. Oh, and it's going to hit you. And I promise you, it's going to give you a little bit more energy and it's serving you. So you're already starting your day. And then when you start your day like that, it's going to continue. That ball will continue rolling. Momentum always continues to roll once you get it started, right? It stops when something pulls energy from you and you serve that thing that's pulling it from you. Okay. So I don't really have anything else to say. Does anybody want to object to the water beside the coffee maker? Carrie and Allison. 
I got both laughing. Carrie. It's not gonna happen. What do you it's mean? It's so not gonna supposed, happen. I just want you to try it. Oh, I'll try it tomorrow, just for you. Okay, you, where's your coffee maker? In the kitchen. And where are you right now? On the chair. How far are you from the kitchen? Like 20 steps. Perfect, can you please get up? No. Yes, go get up. Know. Put the, co put the glass the of water. There. I'm not getting up. <clears throat> I will put a glass of water there for the morning. I promise. I'll even take a photo for you. Parker's sitting here questioning you. Look at here he comes. Here he comes. He's he's oh, looking. like a puppy. He's huge. He's a hundred pounds. <coughs> he eats the triplets' food. Stop it! All right, guys. Promise you, everybody do it. Put a glass of water beside your coffee maker if you're a coffee drinker in the morning. Everybody do it. We are the test group. There's, there's 10 of us here. If all 10 of us do it and we can prove that we feel r wonderful, then maybe we can get 190 more to do it. Who's, who's texting in the group? Let me open this. It does make a big difference. I add a little sea salt and lemon the night before, so ready to go. Jeff's internet is slow. Look at Jeff already, he's claimed to fame right there. Jeff, you are the man. Teach these lovely ladies what they should be doing. Okay? Anyways, that's the end for me. That's the end for you guys. Jacqueline, get that prep done. You got about 25 more minutes before you want to get tucked. Anyways, figure something out that serves you guys. And don't give up your energy to stupid things. Okay, Parker, I got to go. Say bye. Bye, guys. Have a good night.